Welcome to Test Prep Central. We are at the Texas Assessment Practice Test Site, and today we're going to look at the Algebra 1 end of course exam for the Texas STAR assessment. And I've got a link to the page you see here in your show notes. So go ahead and go down and get that link and join me. We are going to work through some items in this test and learn how to use the Desmos graphing calculator to maximize your performance on this test to give you some pointers and tips that should make a difference for you. So let's get started. The first thing you'll do is you will click this green button at the bottom of the screen that says sign in. And then you will select grade and you will select EOC. And then you're going to go to star practice sets. And then we don't want biology, so we're going to scroll down here to mathematics, start redesign algebra one practice test. And then you can change some of this if you want, but I'm going to leave it just as it is and click on select. Now, these are some information about your test, so you can view all that if you'd like, but we're going to begin test now. So press the green button. And then we're going to work these problems. So the first item you may think, well, I don't know how the graphing calculator could help with this item, but actually it can. And I'm going to show you how. Uh, the first thing you want to do is come up here to this toolbar and it says calculator. And there are two choices, the TI graphing calculator and the Desmos. And so today we are focusing on just the Desmos graphing calculator. So click there. And then when you open this up, you can move it around. I don't know that I like the way it works because it sometimes gets in the way on this test. But right now, I think we're okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in the original expression first. So I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to type it in using function notation. Now, this is very important. If you have one variable in your expression, you can rewrite that expression as a function of that variable. And this is how. Just choose a name for your function. I'll do f of m. And then you will type your expression. And it will turn this expression into... It will turn it into a function. And it'll graph it too, so that's kind of nice. So we'll do f of m to the eighth. Now another way around this is to change these m's to x's, but I like to just leave the func whatever variables in the problem, just leave it the way it is. So this is our first function. So the question is, is which answer choice is equivalent to this? So I'm going to move over here so I can see my answer choices, and I'm going to come up with a different name. I'm not going to use f of m. Let's use g of m. And I don't think it really matters, but I usually use two separate names because they're two separate functions. At least three of them are. All right, so we're going to do 7m to the 12th. Now, at first glance, it looks like these are the same. Uh, they look the same. But you don't want to just assume that because look at the next one. I'm going to type this one. Let's call this one h of m. And this one is 10m. Oops, I need my equal sign. 10m to the 12th. Uh, see, they all look the same, but see, you know these aren't the same because one has a 7 and one has a 10. So which is it? Uh, well, here's how we'll decide. Go ahead and zoom way in. Just keep zooming in. You can choose the uh, little plus sign or use your mouse wheel. And eventually, you should start seeing different colors here. See this blue one? That's this one. But notice if you turn off the green one, by clicking on that green button, that red one is right under it. So this H of M function that I typed, 10M to the 12th, is equivalent to the original. So the correct answer is B. Now, as I'm working this, some of you are thinking, there is no way I'm going to do all that to do this problem. And you know what? I wouldn't either because I do actually know how to do the problem without doing any of that. But what I'm showing you is something that can be done quickly if you don't know. So if it's an expression you're not able to do in your head or understand, then this is a strategy for typing expressions with variables other than X. All right. So the next item we're going to look at is item two. So we're going to go on to the next item. Now, one unfortunate thing about <clears throat> this test is you can't really skip through it the way you can other practice tests. So we're going to have to uh, kind of 
just choose an answer for the ones we're skipping over. I am t only focusing on items where the Desmos graphing calculator will help you. So there are some I'm not going to do because I don't think it will help you. And Texas has turned off quite a bit of your functionality. So you don't have the ability to type certain things in your calculator. And so we'll skip some of those as well. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this one and we're going to click on calculator. We are transforming a function f of x equals x. So the first thing I'm going to do is type f of x equals x. And I see a line in my graph. And then it goes on to say, whoops, see this calculator definitely gets in the way. You can resize it. So I'm going to do it like that. All right, g of x is equal to f of x minus 23. So let's go here and type g of x equals f of x minus 23. And what it's doing is it's taking the graph of f of x and it's transforming that graph. And you should be able to see the blue line is down here. So let's read these answers and see which one actually makes sense. The graphs are not parallel. Well, these are parallel. I mean, hopefully you could tell that just by looking. They are parallel. So the answers C and D are going to be our choices. So let's see which one of those makes the most sense. I'll move this up. Boy, these are, you know, there's one thing about this test is this is not a user-friendly calculator, unfortunately. It's very difficult to get it where you want it. And the way they have the text, if I can make some, give some advice to you test creators, put all your text on one side and leave a big spot open for people to use the tools because it's really difficult to fumble around and read and answer your questions when it's like this. All right, let's look at C. The graphs of F and G are parallel and the graph of F is translated up. Well, F is the red one and you definitely don't go up to get G because it's up below it. So the correct answer was D. All right, the next item we're going to look at is number five. So you have some options here. Uh, I, if you click on items, you'll notice the number five is not displayed. So it is not going to let us uh, just jump to five. So we'll go to next. Now, if you go to the next one without doing this problem, it's going to say, are you sure? I'm going to say yes, because <laughs> I am sure. I want to go to five. So I don't want to do four. I'm going to go on to yes. Now, I've skipped those because I don't really know if the calculator uh, is going to help you too much. It might, but I don't have any specific strategy for those, but I do for these. So let's look at number five, which graph represents this function. So that's a pretty straightforward question. We're going to graph the function in the calculator. All right, so I've got it over here. F of X equals three. And then you'll do two divided by three. The divide is right by your shift key, the same button where the question mark is. Now I like to hit the right arrow before closing the parentheses and then shift six makes an exponent and then you'll put X. Now you may notice the keyboard down here. You can use that to do everything I just showed you, but if you will learn the keyboard sh shortcuts, it will save you a few seconds. So shift six makes an exponent, um, divide makes the fraction and so forth. All right, so this looks pretty good actually. I'm looking for the graph. The first one I should say looks pretty good. Well, let me see if I can move this over. All right, okay, let's see. <laughs> it's hard to work with. All right, this graph looks like it has an intercept at the one, but that's not working because if you click on this y-intercept on the calculator, that should be 03, 03. That's 01, so that's not going to work. B is wrong because the graph's going the wrong direction. It should be decreasing. C looks good, and it crosses 03. So this C is your correct answer. D, of course, is going the wrong direction as well. So that's as simple as that. So graphing is, I think, much easier in the Desmos, and it gives you more detail without you having to type any keystrokes. Just click on the graph to see what you've got. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next item. We're going to do number six, so that is the next item. For this quadratic function, the solutions are uh, x is 7 fifths and x is negative 2 thirds. This one's fantastic on Desmos. Really like these types of items. Click on the calculator button and let's put in uh, the first answer choice first. And I'm having a really tough time moving this around. I don't know why. 
All right, let's type in f of x equals, and I'm just typing in answer choice A right now, 14x raised, so do shift 6 and put a 2 for your second power, and then hit the right arrow, type plus 11x minus 15, and you should see this parabola. So the directions say we want to know, at, we want f of x to be 0. So that's pretty easy. What we'll do, don't type f of x equals 0. Type f of and put in the x. So the x values they're giving me are 7 fifths. So we'll do 7 divided by 5. I'm going to hit the right arrow and close that. And then the other one is x is negative 2 thirds. So f, open parentheses, negative 2 divided by 3. And you'll right away see these do not equal 0. I want f of x to equal 0, it says right here. So let's change this answer choice and type answer choice B. So let's get rid of this. This should now be a 15x squared minus 11x minus 14. And look at that. Both of those are now equal to 0. So let's read the question. I hate that this is covered up. I like to reread it before I choose my answer. So let's move this down. Well, now we can see everything. For the quadratic function, the solutions are f of x equals 0, the solutions are, and that's true. So the correct answer in this case was answer choice B. And then the last item we're going to look at today is item number 7. So go ahead and click Next. And again, you would think, well, how's the calculator going to help here? But, but it really does. Uh, I think you'll like this one as well. All right, we have a store manager, and we've got a function, f of x, and we're asked to talk about, let's see, the price of the unsold item in dollars. All right, well, let's look at some of these drop-downs to see what they're saying. They're giving us money, the initial price. Another word for initial means starting. The price of each item and the percent. All right, well, this, I really, really like using tables for these types of items, and it's pretty simple to do. Go ahead and move your calculator over, and let's type in this function, f of x equals 320, multiply that by 0 0.90, and you're going to do shift 6, and put your exponent. Now here is how we put in a table. I want you to click the plus sign where it says add item and choose table. And on the left side of the table, we always want to start at zero because zero is your initial amount or your starting price. So you want to start there. And it is talking about per day, I think, or per something. Let's see what this says. I'm having to resize this. I'm so sorry, but you know, you're going to be doing this too when you test. So it's kind of good for you to see what it's like. Um, it says the price of the items after X weeks. So these are weeks I'm dealing with. So I just want to check that. So we're just going to do a few weeks. So let's do, um, I don't know, about five weeks. So we'll go one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Whoops. I'm typing over my answers here. Zero, one, two, three, four, and five. That's good enough. All right, now at the top right on the Y column, we're not going to use, we're not going to let the calculator do all the work. And here's how you do it. You, are, you get rid of the Y1 and you put F, open parentheses, X, and then put a 1. You do have to put the 1. Let me scoot over so you can see what's going on here. What it's doing is it's taking these values in X1 and putting each one into that equation and giving you out the F of X value or the Y out, the output for that. So now I know what's going on. I can tell right off that these data, this data is decreasing. It went from 320 to 288. Um, and I can see the starting amount as well. So I'm kind of ready to answer this question, except I got to resize my calculator again to get to it. All right, let's just do the first one. The price of the item decreases. It went from 320 to 288. All right, let's move it over. Let's see if I can read this. I'm not having good luck here, guys. But you know what? Maybe this will help Texas know to fix this calculator. Maybe they'll watch this video and go, you know, that's a pain in the butt. Yeah, it is. You should fix it. All right, the initial price of the item was 320 which I can't see, so let's move that over. 
the item decreases at a rate of, um, well, let's look. It started at 320 and went to 288. So if you'll start with 288 and subtract the first one, in fact, go backwards, it'll show you how much it decreased. Now, it's not decreasing 32 every week. And I, hopefully you can tell because there's decimals after this. But let's do 259 over 259.2 minus 288, and you'll see it. You shouldn't have to do this part, by the way. 259.2 minus 288. And see, it's decreasing 28.8, so it's not the same. So what I want to do is get a percent, because this is decreasing by a percent. And it went down 32. So let's take 32 and divide it by the initial amount, which was 320. And you'll see that's 10%. Point 0.1 is 10%. So the rate is 10%. It clearly didn't go down over 100%. That would wipe out all your money in one day, right? <laughs> so hopefully you know that doesn't even make sense, 110%. 90% means most of your money's gone. So honestly, just by process of elimination, you can tell the money's only going down 10% uh, each time. So that's all there is to it. So when you see an exponential function like this and it's asking you to to describe what's happening, I highly recommend a table. It's a real nice way to kind of look at the numbers and get a good feel for what's happening. That is the last question on this training, but this is just the first of five trainings. So please like and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of the Texas Star trainings. And hopefully you have learned some valuable information today and learned how to use that Desmos graphing calculator, but I have just touched the tip of the iceberg. So I highly recommend that you come back and watch the next four videos in this series. Um, there's also lots of training videos and other things on my website. So if you want to check that out too, that would be great. Until then, y'all have a great day.